Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad. This is the Firefighters Financial Toolbox. You guys know I love having people ask me questions and ask me to review different things. Uh, I had a gentleman, his name is Matthew Rudolph, actually asked me to do XLRE. And full disclosure, I didn't know what XLRE was. It's an ETF. It's a Spider Series ETF in the real estate select sector. Uh, so, as you guys know, I am a big fan of REITs because it gives a normal Joe a chance to own real estate when he can't afford a down payment. Uh, I feel like real estate ETFs are a good way to hold REITs and hold a little bit of real estate in your portfolio. Uh, this fund is issued by the State Street Global Advisors. These are the spider people. These are the people that brought SPY. Remember, SPY was the first ETF ever back in 1993 uh, and the spider series are all different ETFs that concentrate on certain sectors of the S&P 500. Uh, the nice thing about them is they're all low cost uh, and as you can see this has an expense ratio of 0 0.10 so basically you're paying ten dollars for every ten thousand dollars you have in this fund per year you guys super cheap. Uh, this fund's been around since October of 2015 which I like and it has about 5.75 billion in assets under management. So decent size. Uh, this could be comparative to your VNQ, which is your Vanguard REIT ETF, uh, IYR, which is your iShares REIT ETF, uh, FREL, which is your Fidelity REIT index. Uh, now, one thing that I am curious about is it only has 29 holdings, and we're going to get into that. Uh, it tracks the real estate select sector index which I believe is a spider index uh, individually owned thing, uh, which is fine. Um, but remember, these are all companies that uh, <clears throat> are in the S&P 500. So they're all big REIT companies. Um, and the here they have a little comparison against Vanguard. You see Vanguard's REIT ETF, the VNQ, is 12 basis points versus 10. Um, now this year, they've both lost because of what's going on, right? Um, but if you look at the big difference is the number of holdings. Uh, VNQ has 167 compared to 31. So these are a little bit more concentrated. And that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's a little different. And so you need to know that. Let's look at year. First, let's start with year to date. So if we look at year to date, we are actually down from the high. But we are coming back from the end of the February lows, right? If we look at one year. We're actually up over one year. We're at 48.32. So right now it's a little under $50 a share, you guys. It's actually trading currently at 49.28. But of course that changes. Up. But if we go back a year, it was at 39. So we're up about $10 a share over the last year. Uh, if we look at the five years, we see that, of course, we had the hit back in March of 2020 when everything took a hit, right? But if we look, we started at about $31 a share. And as I said, we're up to about 39 So over time, it has grown. If we look at, and this is all in America, but let's look at the top 10 holdings. Prologis, American Tower Corporation, Crown Castle International, Equinix, Public Storage, Simon Properties, Well Tower, Digital Realty, Realty Income, and SBA Communications. And those top holdings make about 61, almost 61.5%. Um, so those are big REIT companies that have different exposure. We have Prologis and American Tower, Crown Castle, which is communications. We've got public storage, which of course we all know, we as Americans love to collect stuff. And when we run out of room to put our stuff, we rent storage units so we can keep our stuff. Um, Simon Properties deals with some uh, commercial properties like they get into a little bit of healthcare as well as office space. Well Tower, again, communications. Digital Realty, that is computer cloud-based storage. Uh, and that's something that's going to grow in the future. Uh, Realty Income, everybody knows O. Oh, I hold that personally, individually, as well as in my REITs. Uh, that's a lot of uh, Walmarts, 7-Elevens, that kind of thing. Uh, and again, SBA communications. So we have a big sector of 
REITs that deal with communications. Think cell towers, think that kind of stuff. These are all things that are moving our world. They're not going away. Uh, if we go down a little bit more, we see that average daily share volume is about 5 million shares, so it's very well traded. Uh, remember, this is a all United States ETF. So all the realty, all the real estate is held in the United States on this. If we go to the fact sheet here, let's take a look at the performance, shall we? And the performance we can see. So yeah, we're looking at 13.19% since inception. That's pretty amazing. Uh, five year, almost 15%. Three year, 22.69%. Uh, and that was as of last year. Now remember, these, these holdings do change as they go down. And the industry breakdown, if we look at that, I like looking at this because it gives us a little bit of an idea. Sorry about this, you guys. Industry breakdown. So it, infrastructure, 23.77. Industrial is about 13.3. Residential, a little under 12. Data centers, 11.3. Self-storage, 7.8. Healthcare. 6.9 office space a little under five percent uh retail think malls that kind of stuff a little under eight percent a little under four percent uh retail freestanding that's 7-elevens that kind of stuff 3.6 uh real estate management timber it even owns timber properties and some lodging and resorts to round it out this doesn't hold you guys is there is no mortgage REITs in this etf so when you think mortgage REIT, you think the people that make money off you paying your mortgage. Uh, and that is a type of REIT that's out there. This doesn't have any of that in it. So do I think it's a good choice? Uh, absolutely, you guys. I think anytime you can find a low cost ETF option, it's a good way. And the reason I like them is you... You could, you could pick a winning REIT stock. You could pick Realty Income, for example, or DLR or whatever, and they could do really well. Um, by using ETFs in REITs, you broaden your basket, right? In this case, you have 29 different REIT companies out there. So if one's not performing perfectly, but the other one's doing really well, it evens it out. It's a good way for a low cost to hold real estate in your portfolio. Uh, again, I want to thank Matthew Rudolph for asking me to do this review. I hope you guys got something out. If you did, do me a favor, drop me that like. It really helps the algorithm. Uh, it gets my videos out to more people. Uh, if you have comments, if you have questions, or if you have ideas, you guys, put them in the comments. I, I try to read all comments, and I try to answer them if I can. And if it's something that I don't know or it's something I can... I enjoy looking into this stuff because re I become a better investor by being more knowledgeable about what's out there. All right, we'll see you. Thanks.